Welcome to this edition of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to take a look at uh, adapting the 3040 CNC to over to Arduino and Garble. Um, so in the past, you might remember that I did the episode or a series where I uh, did this with the pro my, my probotic CNC, and this is the control unit from it. So I have the Arduino, and then I took this screw shield, and I made my own sort of parallel port cable and setup <clears throat> based upon that. And, and it worked in everything and uh, did very well. But however, I, I decided to kind of kick it up a notch, and I wanted to change it up a little bit. Um, one, because this has a, a male connector, and I actually needed to have a female connector. And uh, now, so I could simply change and solder this. But what I got looking, and I knew they, these were out here, and I thought this may be a simpler way to go, is I purchased this off of Amazon. It was like $10, and it's a, just a, a basic shield that replaces, that goes on top of the Arduino and replaces the screw shield. And actually, ironically, I think I paid around $12 for the screw shield. And uh, so this goes on here. So I, I, I thought about um, just kind of changing it up because... Uh, I could also do my own PCB, and I thought about it. Uh, Chuck Hellebuck did a great um, series where he did a, a PCB on his uh, CNC. Um, but uh, for ten bucks, I just I don't think I could beat it. So I, I ordered one, and this is this is what I got. And I don't expect too much to be in here. And uh, so what I got, the main thing I got is this this PCB board, and. I got a 25-pin DB connector, female. Uh, two jumpers, uh, and I'll talk about these in a minute, so just two jumpers, and this uh, strip of header. And what you have to do is you have to cut the header yourself, uh, which isn't a big deal to uh, go into the, the uh, hole mountings here and here, because again, the, uh, the bracket goes on believe like this yes goes on like this and then actually interestingly enough what happens is this comes up from the back side and plugs into the bottom of the board so it creates a really tight unit and I, I'm, I'm kind of interested in that uh, to kind of uh, really make this compact because what I want to do is I'm going to 3d print another control box maybe a little fan or something to go on top of here um, because, you know, the one thing, you know, I've, I've watched uh, a number of folks take these, you know, 30-somethings, the 3020, 3040, 3060, and convert them over using the shield, uh, the CNC shield and stuff. And, and that's okay, because I did the laser that way. I built a laser. I converted a, a K40 laser and, and all that. And, and that's okay. But the drivers and everything that come with the, like, the 3040 and the 3028, those are good drivers, too. So why not just plug them into this? And this is like a $10 fix. And it's not like the board is that much more money maybe 30 bucks for the cnc board but I, I just really think this is an interesting way to go because one of the things that this does is then allows me the opportunity if i want to go back to mach 3 which i do have mach 3 a fully licensed copy uh, from the probotic i can do that so it kind of gives me a little bit of latitude versus locking me in so i kind of think that's kind of cool and then i can also move this instead of having um uh, a bunch of different ones. I can actually just change the the double dollar sign setting and swap between machines or something if I wanted. Or this is so cheap, I could you know uh, do it on its own. So I tell you what, here's what I'd like to do. I'm gonna let's jump over and take a look at the instructions on the computer building this, and then because uh, there's a couple things I want to talk about and, and show you guys uh, about it. Because if you're interested in doing one, I'll put the link below. And then let's hop over to the bench, let's solder this up, and we'll go from there. So let's head over to the computer. Okay, so here we are in the computer. I pulled up the um, uh, instructions for the parallel port board. Uh, it actually comes with a written page, actually this first page, and it gives you this URL to go download the instructions uh, for, that we're taking a look at here. Uh, one of the things we've already covered out, we've already taken a look at what was in the uh, bag. So all the stuff was in the bag, and so that's a good thing. And then if we scroll down here, what they do is they give us the layout of Garble. So they give us both both layouts, the traditional and with uh, PWM layout. Now, I've gone with the PWM layout. Also, one of the nice things they do over here is they give you the... Um, 
um, I'm, I'm highlighting them all, but over here, the common CNC uh, L LPT output, which I believe is the typical Mach 3 output. The other piece that uh, I want to point out is are these two caveats below. Um, and it, this, this is one of them pinned out on PCB but not mapped. So one of the things to take a look at is it's pinned out on the PCB but not mapped is um, the A access or what would typically be your fourth access. So this does not appear to be um, uh, mapped and I'm not sure exactly what that means. So we're going to have to do some experimentation in the future. I'm not going to do it this time around. Uh, so we'll have to figure that one out and again I'll share that once I figure that, figure out what that actually means. So I think it's it's taken to the PCB uh, but it's not maybe mapped to the the 25 DB25. I don't know. I'll have to check that out but uh, just something to notice. So again one of the things kind of talked about and I'll show as we go through this uh, you're given uh, a 40 pin male header and you have to cut this up. I just use side cutters uh, I'll show you that a little bit when we go to the workbench and, and start the assembly. Also, um, as you'll see in the assembly, this is how I've done mine, is I've again put the uh, headers in the actual Arduino and soldered them uh, with the Arduino holding it, so it, it actually works good. Now, one of the things, notice the orientation, so the, the wording should be up and it should be facing the USB port uh, because a little bit counterintuitively what we'll see here is the uh, female DB25 actually goes what I would consider upside down into the mounting, which makes it for a nice package. However, it's, you know, uh, kind of in an in intuitive sense makes it want to go up here. Now, there's some stuff that, that says here um, uh, if, you, if you need a, a male 25, which you'd have to acquire on your own, you need to flip it around and go from the top. So, um, you know, to, to reverse the pin configuration. So I found that interesting. So maybe something a little bit to be aware of. Uh, this is the other piece, the PWM layout. So uh, one of the things I want to point out is they're cutting actually two traces, uh, a trace here and a cut here in the U shape because what it says if you're using Garble uh, version 0.9 with PWM enabled, which is typically version 9 is, um, you have to solder in these headers over here, but before you do that, you have to cut these traces, these U-shaped traces. Uh, so where it's up here it says cut the U-shaped traces near the 2x6 pads. And uh, anyways, you, you use a sharp you know, utility knife or something, cut it. And again, I'll kind of show you on, on the ones I do. And then you have to set this up. Now, one of the things that you'll hear me in the outro is I demonstrate this talk about uh, the PWM capabilities. Now, uh, with my unit, I have a variable frequency uh, 800 watt uh, spindle. Now, the one thing I found, is, and I wasn't clear in the outro because it took me later experimenting after I filmed, because I typically do intro and outro in the middle later, is um, utilizing the PWM configuration, it does seem to understand the S command. So if I issue an S0, it turns off the spindle. And if I turn, uh, if I give it an S1000, it turns on the spindle, so zero or max. Now, um, this is when the actual uh, variable frequency uh, power supply is, or, or control unit is set to manual. So I found that very interesting. I have not been able to get it to work yet set to PC. So I got to mess around a little bit with that. It could be in some garble configuration settings, but um, just the fact that you know S0 and S1000 actually work to turn the spindle on and off I thought was very encouraging because that's primarily what I want to do. I, I don't see myself utilizing this with a lot of variable spindle speeds if you will. So just the fact I can do an S0 and an S1000 to turn it on and off. Now I didn't seem to notice that that you know M4 and M5 made a difference but I didn't mess around with it that much. Um, so there'll be more coming on this piece but I just I didn't want to point that out. Um, so and then that's pretty much about it. So I tell you what from the computer here, let's go, let's hop over to the workbench and start soldering this guy up and see how it goes together. Okay, so here we are at the bench. We've cut the um, the header pins and uh, what we did is we just used a pair of side cutters and measured them off and, and cut them off. 
also one of the things we did as we talked about in the um, instruction piece is I've cut the two traces. Notice there are two traces on the U-shape uh, portion for the pulse width mo uh, modulation, the PWM, so those have been cut. So one of the first things I'm going to do is I'm going to actually solder these on first um, because they're going to go on the top and then I'm going to have to uh, flip it over to do this. So what I'm going to do, I'm not sure how all this is going to stay in focus, but um, and how my fat fingers are going to work. So, but I'm just going to stick these in here, and then I'm going to just kind of flip it over and uh, try to solder these in place. Okay, so we've uh, soldered in the six pins and now what we've done is, as the instruction is mentioned, we inserted the header pins into the Arduino and that's what's resting on it. Now the nice thing about it is with this parallel port, um, it's actually got these clips that clip it and hold it into place. So now it's just the fact of soldering all these pieces, all these pins into place. Okay, there we go. We've uh, got it all soldered together. I mean, this was a, actually a very quick process. Um, you know, again, uh, not too much there. Now, I didn't really solder these guys in. Maybe I'll give them a touch of solder. Um, I didn't want to overly, just to make sure it has a decent ground. Because uh, the 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 the, uh, the head the uh, plug is actually held in by these guys. So uh, again, I think this is uh, pretty slick. So let's uh, go connect it up and see if it works. Okay, welcome back. So we have the unit hooked up. We've got it plugged into the Arduino, and it's hooked up to the computer. I've got Universal G Code Sender running. Um, over here, let me see if I can turn you so you can see. So I got Universal G Code ru running there, and so I'm gonna sit you back here and kind of you can watch the machine. So I'm just going to send some control commands. First to Z axis, so Z axis works, and then what we're gonna do is do the X axis. X axis works, and Y axis works. So all that's good stuff. If you remember me mentioning when I when we went over the instructions, I'm not sure about the um, A axis. As you see, I have the fourth axis over there. I don't have it hooked up yet, um, so I, I don't I can't test that right now. But the basics of everything that I want to do seem to work. Now the one thing is I don't know if this is going to work with pulse with modulation either because I turned the spindle off and I don't know how to turn it back on to be honest with you. So I'm going to have to go Google that to see if the PWM and everything works, but all the basic stuff from the garble actually works and is uh, uh, running on there. So I'm pretty happy with this for 10 bucks. I can't complain. Now I might have to do, again, I think for the A, I might have to run some um, jumper wires from from various pins over here, maybe to some pins on the, um, uh, on the DB25 if they're not uh, traced through, but that's no big issue. I like how compact this is too, if you see how thin this is. Again, I'm going to 3D design a box for this to go into and uh, that way I just, th this will become just like a little appliance or a little um, adapter if you will, because it's powered by the computer and just plugs into the parallel port and runs this, so I think that's kind of cool. So anyways, I'll put the link to this below. If you got any questions, hey, hit me up. Um, when I go a little bit further with the other axis, other axis, the the fourth axis there, and um, pulse with modulation, I'll do another video show show you how to set that up. I'm going to probably also do one on the general setup of this thing because I'm kind of learning as I'm going along. Uh, I still have to connect the water up on the spindle and build a water cooling system, and I just got some of the other parts in for that uh, today. Um, 
So working on that. Also, you probably see in the background, you'll see a video. I don't know if it'll, it'll probably come out before this, but you can see in the background I'm working on 3D printing the adapters for the uh, laser fume extraction system. So that's a work in progress. So I've got a lot of stuff going on, uh, but I just kind of want to share this with you guys. Uh, if anybody's interested, again, link will be below. Like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video. Cheers. Please click like below and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date on all of our projects.